grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua the Messiah to the elect across the earth. Salute. We love you all. Okay, special shout out to all our partners. We are so grateful for your realness, for your love, for your prayers, for your support. As we are fighting a well-organized beast system, pushing the true gospel to the four ends of the earth, your help is way more appreciated than you could ever imagine. Okay, and you living righteous and holy is the most important thing. Okay, the goal of the Revelation of Jesus Christ Ministries here is to get you to heaven. It's to help you be as strong as you can be in the Lord. He has to be your personal Lord and Savior. You have to have a relationship with Him. Your relationship with Christ is more important than any other relationship. Period. So, very excited about this message. Just got a couple of announcements. The 2019 ATL Conference is a, few, a couple months away. Okay, don't wait to the last minute. Get all your things in order. The Bible says do everything in decency and order. Um, email us at conference. ATL2019 at yahoo.com. Let us know how many of y'all are coming. Give us the information so we can get at you and contact you um, with the further information that we'll give you. But you don't want to miss this year. I'm telling you, last, last year was amazing. And all glory to Christ. All I can say about this year, the word that dropped in my spirit is upper room. That's all I'm going to say, Lord willing. Okay. A couple other announcements. We are catching up to emails and phone calls as I had to go on the law of preservation. I had to back back away and go seek the face of God. Uh, I was kind of MIA for 10 days. And uh, sometimes you need to do that, saints. You need to learn when to listen. You have to listen to when God wants you to charge up and get regenerated in the Holy Ghost and to get strengthened. So uh, we're, we're really trying to catch up to emails, phone calls. Uh, we were doing like 10 to 15 deliverance prayers in literally seven days. It takes a lot, okay? And we have to recharge. So if you were waiting to get a deliverance prayer done, please be patient. Uh, what are some other announcements? We read y'all emails, okay? And we appreciate everything. Some of you are like, hey, Brother Words, what's up with another exclusive partner's message? We do have one coming through uh, the grace of God. An amazing message. A life-changing message, but just be patient. It's coming. The other thing, too, I got quite a few emails about uh, doing a sermon about tithes, offerings, and giving. It's biblical, okay? And some of y'all like, Brother Works, you never preached a message on that. Trust me. It's not that I don't want to. I have to wait for the Lord, y'all. I have right here on this notepad literally almost 30 messages that God has given me the titles and what he wants me to do. And what I do is I wait for him to tell me which ones to go in and do. Led by him and release. I, it has to be the right season, y'all. So please be patient. We love your suggestions. Um, requests on certain messages and things you would love to hear preached. We love that. We love your YouTube comments. We may not be able to respond to y'all, but we love y'all. Y'all are, are so special. And you're growing in the Lord my wife and I see it. Other brothers and, and sisters in the ministry that are growing fast. It, it just... I don't even know what to say. I'm just so grateful for y'all. Lioness is so great. We are so grateful for y'all. Uh, with that being said, I believe that's it for announcements. Oh, one more. Uh, website, <laughs> by the grace of God, is getting updated and upgraded. So be on the lookout for that, Lord willing. As y'all know... The ghetto gospel is the street outreach. The revelations of Jesus Christ has to be the main name. So that's what we're getting redone. We love having revelations of Jesus Christ. We love to know more about him. Paul said that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. So that's about it for announcements. Uh, yeah, let's go. Y'all ready? I know you got your sword. You, you better have a notebook. You, you should have a pen. Because even though we at the dinner table, the, you need to treat this like a classroom setting. Okay? He's not just the king of kings. 
He's not just the Lord of Lords, y'all. He's the chef of all chefs. Can I get a name, man? The king of the kitchen. Oh, I like the way that sounded. The king of the kitchen has chefed up another amazing, life-changing message. And I am honored to serve you this evening at the dinner table. Go on and make a mess. Don't be bashful. Enjoy the meal. You need water, you holler at me. You need to burp, just go ahead and burp. Thank God for this wonderful meal. Jesus wants you to be real with him. Nobody sits at a dinner table all weird and extra cautious, cutting the meat all neat and... Nah, like, true family, we laugh at the table, we talk about what's going on, you know what I mean, the energy is flowing, that's how we always want the dinner table messages to be, so let's go ahead, brother words, you're talking too much as usual, brother, you come on, man, don't let the food get cold, bring me that hot meal in Jesus' name, okay, fine, is it okay with you if I take a swig of water? I'm just playing. Let's go. Y'all ready? This message right here is so amazing. Write this down. Settled at the bottom. Write that down. Settled at the bottom. Have you ever wondered what is it about the laying on of hands? The do's, the don'ts. You ever wonder why there's certain seasons people change up and act? Like really demonic. And then there's other seasons where they seem to be normal. Well, we want to cover all of that in this uh, message that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to deliver through me. We should not break bread without washing our hands in the spirit realm. Amen. Let's say this together. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your holy blood. Thank you for dying for me and rising from the dead. Destroying all the powers of darkness. Destroy every evil thing that would try to hinder me from receiving this message. Help my mind to focus. May I have the mind of Christ. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Bless this ministry, Lord, and continue to speak through them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And Lord, use me, speak through me. I give you all the glory. I'm so thankful, Lord, for all you do in this ministry. What can we say but thank you? We love you so much. In Jesus Christ's name, may everyone that hears this message, may the power of darkness break off of them. May they become so in love with you. And may this word change them. By the sound of Jesus Christ in my voice, I pray. Amen. Okay, good. We got the announcements done. You know what I mean? Got my swig of water. Went, went through. Did our prayer. It's time for a meal. Hallelujah. Settled at the bottom. Now, we got, I got to do this strategic now. There's certain areas I want to talk about. We're going to discuss the demonic realm in this message. And we're also going to discuss the Christ realm. The gospel realm, the kingdom of heaven in this message. And that way, by the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and with sound doctrine, you're going to have such a greater understanding after the message. And you're going to feel blessed and refreshed, and you're going to be more knowledgeable. See, people perish because of a lack of knowledge, the word says. So, we want to give you the knowledge of Christ, but with the love of God to edify Settled at the bottom. Now, we're going to start off in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, a lot of these I'm just going to give you. You know the deal. I can't read all 30 verses of scriptures because it'll be a five-hour message. So what I like to do is give you homework. I go through some. I read some. And I give you some kind of for you to take with you and eat later. Cool? Cool? Okay. So 1 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's get it, y'all. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 
Some of y'all like, brother, I'm already there. You slower than me, bro. What's wrong with you? Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Look at what it says. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Hold on a minute. Paul, you telling me that gifts can be given? By the laying on of hands. We got to get to the bottom of this y'all. This is an amazing. Um, I know I keep saying that. But you got to realize like. The sermons that Jesus gives. They amaze me for real. Like his wisdom. His knowledge. The things that he reveals. That's where I get my joy from. When you can know Jesus greater, that should be your number one joy. What did Paul say? That I may know him. What did Peter say? That if we have brotherly kindness and love and all of these things in us, we shall neither lack nor be barren in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any true ministry, the number one sign that they're with God is the knowledge of Jesus Christ that they have. And the fruit of Jesus Christ that they bear. And the presence of the Holy Ghost to confirm it. So, let's go. The laying on of hands. Timothy was giving gifts. Well, let's go through some scriptures about laying on of hands. And again, we're going to go to two different aspects with this. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead. So, Acts. We're going to kind of dive into quite a few scriptures in Acts. We're not going to read all of them, but I want you to go to Acts chapter 6, verse 6. It says in Jesus' name, and when they set before the apostles, excuse me, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Listen to this. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied. Uh, wow. So the, the laying on of hands was very important, y'all. I, I need you to follow now. Now go to chapter 8 of the book of Acts. We're going to go to 8, 14 in Jesus' name. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. As for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. This is amazing. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money, and you, you know the deal. He wanted the power. Why? Because he was a witch, and he wanted. He was a novice. He was a, a uh, narcissist. He wanted to be lifted up. And what did Peter say? Your money perished with you. It was a terrifying situation. You can't play with stuff like that. But I needed you to see this. This whole laying on of hands is all through the word. Now go to the next chapter, 19. Acts 19. We're going to go to 17 in Jesus' name. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, has appeared unto thee in the way as thou came and hath sent me, that thou mightest receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and of course, it worked. Because when he laid hands, look what it says. Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. This is heavy, 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 heavy. I know we're breezing through them, but it's for a reason. Go to chapter 13 with me real quick. Chapter 13, verse 3, in Jesus' name. And when they prayed and fasted, or and when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and they sent them on the way. Wow. Wow.
I want to jump so far ahead in this message, but I got to take my time with it so that way you guys get the entire meal, the breadsticks, the salad, um, the steak potatoes, you know what I mean? The, you know, everything just all in one. And because this is such a, a powerful message in so many different levels and all glory to Christ. Amen. That's, that's interesting. So again, the laying on of hands when they would send them off. They didn't just do it to do it, y'all. There was something that supernaturally happened. And we're going to get into that. Um, this message is way deeper than you think, so just be patient. Mark 16, 17, look what the great king promised. Look at what he declared. Come on, let's get it. Mark 16, 17, in Jesus' mighty name. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall what lay hands on the sick and they shall recover there you go there's that laying on of hands again <laughs> go to james chapter 5 just real quick breeze with me hallelujah now the laying on of hands is another complete like it it should be its own bible study Okay, and by the grace of God, we'll do one down the road, but I needed to brush on it so you can get the fullness of this message, and then we'll move forward from there. So James chapter 5, verses, I want to say 14, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, you see that? So again, the laying on of hands, so it goes on and on and on. But interesting enough, though, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, if you go there real quick, I want you to see this now. 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul says something very interesting, though. Watch this. What does he say, though? In the name of Jesus Christ, verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. You see that? So... On one end, we see all these laying on of hands to send people on their way to help someone receive their sight, to impart the Holy Ghost. But then again, Paul turns around and says, but hey, lay, lay hands suddenly on no man. Why? We're about to get into that in a minute. Now, yeah, I just want to go ahead and do it. Back to 1 Timothy while we're here. And I want you to rewind and go back to 14. Let's reread this now. Okay? It says, uh, verse 14, chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. So, so here now we have to establish another thing. We have to establish that... We also have to have gifts, right? And that gifts also can be given through the laying on of hands. Not just the gift of the Holy Ghost, but you have to know that the Holy Ghost comes with gifts. Whew. And make sure y'all don't take these messages for granted for real, okay? Cherish these messages beyond gold, beyond diamonds. Cherish these messages because they're strengthening you. They're changing you on the inside. That's the difference with this ministry. The Holy Ghost is well, alive, and active in this ministry. Jesus Christ is the head of this ministry. And he gives a lot of revelations. What did he say? For you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to others, they just don't get it. It's because of these ministries have a lack of love. In their heart, and they don't really love the Son of God like they appear to. Okay? You have to love Jesus Christ not only with your word, but with your deeds and your actions. So do not take these messages for granted. It's, it's a desert out here. We have hundreds of emails that I can show y'all of people that say the same thing. And these are people from different states and different continents. Man of God, I'm so grateful I found this ministry. It's a desert out here. I don't get revelations like this. I don't get teachings like this. I'm changing. The word of God is changing me. They're giving Christ the glory 
because he's the head of this ministry. We're just servants that serve. Hallelujah. We are servants of the Most High God, but he gets the glory. So do not take him for granted in this ministry. Amen. I had to say that real quick because this message is amazing. And you'll know that because we're going to get to it, okay? Oh, by the way, I have a, an analogy that I'm going to do at some point in the, in the sermon where I literally had to create something to help you understand the settled at the bottom message. So when it comes, just be ready for it. I know you're going to find it really helpful and insightful, but you probably get a laugh too because it, it is kind of comical at the same time. So um, with that being said, let's get right to it. So we just established how important laying on of hands is, how the Holy Ghost is imparted, how sight can be received, how gifts are given. But on the other end, we also know there's a danger of laying hands on the wrong people or the wrong people laying hands on you. See, a lot of y'all have gone to too many ministries, too many places, too many people, and you've allowed the wrong people to lay hands on you. Think about this logically. If I, through the power of Jesus Christ, can lay my hands on you, and this is a fact, it's been done, and the Holy Ghost can impart into you, your sight can be received, gifts can be given, isn't it fair to say that somebody who has a, an unclean spirit masquerading as a prophet, masquerading as a pastor or some man or woman of God, if, you're, if you come into an agreement with them and you allow them to lay their hands on you, they can impart a unclean spirit into you. And listen, we'll do a prayer at the end of the video as we pretty much always do by the grace of God. And if you've uh, allowed people to lay hands on you, we want to go ahead and lead you to a prayer to get you cleansed from anything that could have transferred into you. Okay? Also demonic gifts as well. Do not get it twisted. The devil will give gifts. He tries to copy Christ in his setup. Christ in his structure. Jesus gives the Holy Ghost with gifts. Satan will try to give you an unclean spirit with gifts. Remember the woman that was following Paul and them around? And she was saying, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. And after a few days, Paul got so grieved in the Holy Spirit that he turned around and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And that male spirit came out of that woman and she no longer had the power to do divination. See, that was a gift the devil gave her as a diviner. Um, the word there is pythos in the Greek. It's where you get the word python. It's a python spirit. I remember uh, doing a deliverance prayer over the phone and the Lord gave me a word of knowledge about this man and I could literally see the python spirit wrapped around his soul at the base of his spine. And we cut it with the sword of the spirit and I commanded it to loosen and come out of him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And literally his mouth opened up, his jaw expanded and he was like, ah, 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 and the spirit was coming out. That snake spirit was coming out of his mouth. It was put into him and Thanks be to the Holy Ghost, it came out. Can I get an amen? See, you can't get caught up in deliverances and miracles and these things. You can't get caught up in that. Jesus said, don't wild out and get all excited and rejoice over the miracles, but thank him that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. It's great to be joyful that you get delivered, but don't lift that stuff up, I'm telling you. So, Anyways, let's get back. We're well structured here. We're making good time by the grace of God. So now I want to talk about gifts. Again, this is a completely different topic, different sermon. But I got to touch it all. I got to tap on it a little bit to bring this message together. Amen. A big one is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
Uh, just take a walk with me real quick. First Corinthians 12. Now you you go ahead and um, you read the whole chapter. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. But it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, called it Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, these are diversities of gifts, but the same what? Same Spirit. Remember, I told y'all that earlier. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. Now listen, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. And you see, that's that's one of the... Uh, many gifts that Christ operates through this ministry is a word of wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures and of Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. It's him. It, he gives the gifts. So how could you boast in that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It says to another by faith, uh, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Which is also in this ministry. Thank you Holy Ghost. All of these really. Thank you Lord. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it that one and the self same spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. Now again the, the whole gifts aspect. Is something that that'll be a completely different sermon as the Lord wills it. But you can clearly see and legit like that's not a cocky statement or an arrogant statement. Those gifts reside in this ministry. Why? Because Jesus Christ is lifted up. He's the head, not man. He is the head of this ministry. The Holy Ghost is the power operating in this ministry. And... It's not just Lioness and myself. We have mighty men and women of God that are called to the front lines that are growing right now and be and being strengthened in the Holy Ghost for such a time as this. There's a mighty army rising up in this ministry. Uh, you know, hopefully you're a part of it. But, uh, you know, Jesus Christ said, in the last days, there will be a great war. The saints will roam the earth with the gospel. Yes, we will be outnumbered. Only in the physical, though. We surely will outnumber the enemy in the spiritual. <laughs> so, he gets all the glory. It's just gifts, y'all. It's Tongues is amazing, but it's just tongues. Prophecy is just prophecy. It's it's used as a tool. Make sure you don't idolize this stuff. Okay? And you got to realize that the Holy Ghost is who you want to lift up. He's the one you want to worship. He's the giver of the gifts. Jesus gives us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gives us the gifts. Now, the other thing too I want to talk about is the fruit. Um, a lot of times you hear there's nine gifts and nine fruit. There's a deeper mystery to that, but we'll get into that another day. Galatians chapter 5, 22. Um, just out of respect for the Holy Ghost, I want to read this. Look at what it says. Galatians 5, 22 in Jesus' name. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. So not only can you receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost, but you can receive the fruit of the Holy Ghost. And the fruit is actually more important than the gift. Because if you get the gifts and not the fruit, you know what? I'm going to save that for another message. You trying to get an extra meal out of me. The Lord, you better stop. Okay? Wait. The Lord will give that. Don't be trying to get an extra meal here. Okay, let's stick to this. That's another message and it's really awesome. But it'll come in its season. Now listen. 
So we talk about the laying on of hands and how we can receive fruit and we can receive gifts. And when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit of Christ comes and dwells in us. This is very educational. You're going to love this. Hallelujah. I want you to write all this down. And I want you to write this down. You have your body, your soul, and your spirit. I know there's some people that teach you that the soul and spirit are the same. No, they're not. Scripture backs that up. Okay? You have your mind. You have... Your spiritual mind, or the spirit of your mind, like the Word of God says. And then there's the carnal mind. I need you to follow now. Because this is what's going to help you to get a greater understanding of the settled at the bottom message. The Lord, the Holy Ghost, dwells in your spirit. Write that down. And He operates in the spirit. Of your mind. And he has access to your literal mind. Ultimately he takes over your entire body. Your soul. Your body. He, he wants to reign. And expand the kingdom of heaven. Everywhere on the inside of you. But I need you to know that your spirit is reserved for the Holy Ghost. Demons don't dwell in the spirit. Not in your spirit. The soul is where demons will try to live and reside. Write that down. And they operate. You see how the Holy Spirit resides in your spirit. And he'll operate through the spirit of your mind. Well, demons will try to reside in a soul and operate through the carnal mind. You see that? There's a parallel war going on. It's very important you remember this for what I'm about to show you very soon. By the grace of God. Now. Here's the thing. Oh I'm loving it. 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 So. And he's. He's actually stirring up in me right now. I can feel him. And I'm. I'm, I'm just expressing the truth to you. Like how I feel right now. See a lot of y'all don't realize what I go through. When you, when you hear me be like Lord I can't do this. Like. I'm not just saying that. I'm literally like, I become a minister of flame of fire according to the word. So I'm like burning up in the spirit realm. And it can be very overwhelming at times. Okay? Jeremiah said it was like a fire shut up in his bones. It's very hard to describe. Like you can literally feel the flames flapping around in the spirit realm. As Jesus fans. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> As Jesus fans the fire, it's increasing and the word becomes stronger. You can usually discern where I start to move into another realm when I'm preaching. Where the Holy Ghost will magnify even more. And I'm just like, oh, I can't do this, Lord. This is so strong. I'm just keeping it real with you. We had a dinner table, right? I want to be laid back with you. I want to be able to express myself Without feeling like some of y'all weirdos in the back, Pharisees, just sitting there trying to find something. You're kicking against the thorns. What you need to do is get that envy and jealousy out of you. And go seek the Lord for yourself. And see what he'll do for you. See, that saints, most of y'all love the Lord. You love us. You love this ministry. But there are some that hate Christ. And they hate us. And they're just religious people. And they scratch their head and go, Well, he, he don't boast about being on fire. And what is all the mysteries that he gets in Revelations? And how does he get them? And blah, blah. You got to understand, these people are so bitter inside. It's sad. It's real sad. But unfortunately, they're out there. But I'm talking to you. Okay, they really honestly weren't invited to the dinner table. They just clicked on a video and forced their way into our dinner table meeting. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking to y'all brothers and sisters that love the Lord and you enjoy the messages at the dinner table. I like being real with you. You know what I'm saying? I want to express myself. I want to be able to talk. So let's go ahead. Let's continue this message. So like I said, I can feel the Lord stirring up in me. This message right here 
is a life-changing message. Okay? And thank you, Holy Ghost. So now, we're breaking this down. We talked about the laying on of hands. We talked about the gifts. Because remember what Paul said to Timothy in chapter 14. He said, Timothy, you were given gifts by the laying on of hands. Right? So we established the gifts that the Holy Ghost operates through. And what do we establish? That everything comes from the Holy Ghost. All these gifts. It's not that you want love. You know, without the Holy Ghost giving it. You want patience or you want healing powers or prophecy without the Holy Ghost giving it. So we're going through the gifts and all of these things. And we're talking about how laying on of hands is so important. But we also talked about the danger of laying on of hands when one is not called to do that. It's very important that you catch that. So now we're bringing all this together for the amazing revelation of Jesus Christ in this message. So I got a lot of scriptures I want to go through about the stirred up in the spirit. Because remember, the, bo- the, the name of the sermon was what? Settled at the bottom. So with that being said, y'all, let's get back to this so we can go and I'll show you the video of the analogy that's going to, it's going, as soon as you watch it, you're going to be like, wow, that's crazy. You're going to be like, wow, that's so blessed. Okay. So here we are. Settled at the bottom is the name of the message. We're going step by step. We talked about the gifts, the fruit, the importance of laying on of hands. Also the warning of not letting everybody lay hands and not laying hands on everybody. You have to be led of the spirit of God. Right. We talked about how the Holy Ghost is the giver of the gifts and the fruit. Right. All right. Now, this scripture right here blew my mind. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. This is what inspired this whole message. When I read this, I I immediately started to download. And I was like, wait a minute, Lord. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I started to meditate. And that's when he just started to fellowship with me. And show me this mystery. And show me this revelation that you're about to find out. Amen. That should make you excited. So 2 Timothy chapter 1. I want you to see this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. That thou stir up the gift of God. Which is in thee. By the putting on of my hands. Did you did you just hear that? Stirring up the gift of God that is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Like Paul, you can't do that to me, bruh. You need to go into details here. You be teasing brothers too much. You be teasing brothers and sisters too much, Paul. Come on, P. You got to get deeper, man. So I started to really meditate on this. And that's when my life changed. Legit, like my life is not the same since God gave this message. And I know your life is going to change. Praise God. If you obey, if you walk in Him, if you're living for Him. Amen. So... That that should have set off that should have set off a red flag. You should have been like, wait a minute. That should have had you meditating. Okay, so now I said, okay. All right. Where are we going with this? Well, what does that mean to stir up the gift that's within thee? I got a lot of scriptures I want you to write down. I'm not gonna read all of them. I want you to write these down, okay? Psalms 39, verse 2. It goes on to say that sorrow can be stirred up in somebody. Write that down. Isaiah 14, 9 talks about how hell is stirred up for thee. For those that are wicked, of course. Stirred up, okay? Jeremiah 31, we're going to read...
We're going to read Jeremiah 31, verse 20. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spoke against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. In the original Hebrew, it says, my bowels, is, my bowels are stirred up for him. That's what that word, whenever you hear the word rise up or troubled, nine out of ten times, it means stirred up. So God was stirred up for him. Isn't that amazing? Go to Hosea 11. Go to Hosea. Take a walk with me. All right, Hosea 11. Look at what it says now, verse 8. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as a boyim? My heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together. You see that word, my heart is turned within me? It literally means stirred up. Stirred up. Remember, when you hear the word rise up, or if you hear the word troubled, it usually means stirred up. Most, nine out of ten times, it means stirred up. Okay? Now, let's go to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Be patient, okay? You're going to see it in a minute. It's going to all pop. It's going to it's just going to appear. You know, it was interesting the disciples it says that Jesus opened up their understanding to the scriptures. That's one thing that Jesus does through this ministry. He'll open up your understanding to the scriptures and you be like that's crazy. That's what that means. And that's making you richer in the spirit realm. Amen. So Haggai chapter 1. Are y'all there? Now watch verse 14. This is very important. Look at what it says. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shalatil, the uh, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jezedek, the high priest. In the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. I need you to remember that for the prayer at the end. So God can stir up your spirit to seek him. I can't do it. I got to show y'all my, my exciting little analogy. Don't, don't make fun of me now. Okay, some of y'all are going to laugh. Be serious. I'll allow a little bit of laughter at the dinner table. Just don't become a clown on me. Y'all ready for it? Okay. <laughs> All right, I confess. I had to legit, like, ask my son to bust up one of his action figure guys to take the legs and the arms to, to do this, this parable for you so you could get a greater understanding see one of the gifts that Christ does in this ministry and through this ministry is he opens up your understanding to the scriptures and one thing I really love about the Lord is how he'll take an example that's very simple see he would say like uh, the kingdom of heaven is like this field he he wanted you to know he didn't want you to be like what is he talking about a lot of these so-called men of God, they use fancy words and try to sound all proper. They don't care if you understand or not. They're more concerned about looking smart and looking educated. So I love parables. So uh, it's a gift that Christ had has has. Uh, it's a gift that Christ has given me. So this parable is going to bless you greatly. I know it looks funny. Okay, it's like you know a bottle man, but I had to go out and buy this. Decently expensive organic carrot turmeric vegan drink to show y'all this video I'm about to show you and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a separate video and slice it in To show you a close-up of what this message is about because remember what I told you the message is called settled 
at the bottom. And in this bottle here, all the good stuff is settled at the bottom. Even though there's a tint of orange in the actual juice, the good stuff is at the bottom. And I'm going to slide him out because I don't, I don't want Mr. Bottle Man to distract y'all. Hello? <laughs> I don't want him to distract y'all. Okay, he's missing a hand, by the way, but, you know, pray for the brother. So, this whole thing about stirred up. Now, there's more scriptures. Oh, Lord, like, I just want to pour out everything now and just get to the finale, but I can't. I got to be patient. So let's go through these scriptures. I'm showing you all the different ways God can stir up and how things are stirred up. And remember, we're talking about the demonic aspect of it and the heavenly aspect of it, how the devil tries to stir up and how Jesus will stir up. Okay. Now, we just seen how God can stir up a man because it said he stirred up their heart to what? Work on the house of the living God, right? So that lets you know that God can stir up your spirit to get better with him, to get more right with him. That is huge. I told you this message is liberating. Why? Because Jesus is the one giving it. Now listen, I want you to write these down. Matthew chapter 2 verse 3. It said his spirit was troubled. That means stirred up. Matthew 21.10. I want to read this. Matthew 21.10. What did it, what's it say? Let's see right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says in 21.10. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? That word in the Greek means stirred up. The whole city was stirred up. Okay, now this is interesting. Mark chapter 15, 11, Look at what it says. Look at what it says. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. That word in the Greek means they, they, they stirred up the people. You see that? So he had the power to stir them up in the demonic. I'm getting ahead of myself. To stir them up in the demonic realm. You read through the book of Acts. How many times did the Pharisees try to stir up the people, right? Acts 17, 16. Let's go there. Acts 17, 16. Like I said, write it down. Let me read it to you. Amen. It says, in Jesus' name, unless you can keep up, then read with me. It says, now, while, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. There you go again. What does this mean that his spirit was stirred up? Remember, this whole journey started because of 2 Timothy chapter 1. When Paul told Timothy how when I, I stirred up the gifts that are with, I stirred up your spirit when I laid my hands on you. And that had me thinking. And it sent me on this amazing journey. So now you see that Paul's spirit was stirred up, right? But there's another aspect to this. Go to Acts chapter 13, verse 50. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. So one thing about these Pharisees, through demonic power, they could stir up people. You know, I can't do it anymore, y'all. I need you to see this video. Watch this video, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the analogy and the parable that the Lord Jesus Christ gave me the wisdom to do to show y'all. And I know it looks funny. I glued the arms and legs, and I didn't have to do that. But... You know, when you do things for the Lord, you want to go above and beyond. And I knew this would really bless you with an understanding of how important it is to stir up your inner man by worshiping God and by praising Him and by glorifying Him. You activate the Holy Ghost to stir up in you. You understand? So I wanted to show y'all, picture this knife as like, you know, the sword of the Spirit per se. And I'm going to try my best to turn the, turn the cap. Oh, man, my man leg fell off again. Hold on. 
and the leg fell off. Give me a minute. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to, I want you to see this now. Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm just stirring up, right? Now, when you are in the Lord, now we're going to look at this from two angles. Picture this could be your spirit. And this is all the blessings and the fruit and the gifts. And of course, the Holy Ghost, you got to stir him up. The, that's why Paul said, Timothy, stir up the gift that's within thee, right? But also look at it as also a person has a soul and the demons reside at the bottom of the soul. And the devil tries to stir them up all up in you, up into your mind to, to get you to walk in the, in the flesh. Now look at it in a good way, right? So now when you put the word in you and you're worshiping God. And you're like, Lord, I need you, Jesus. And Jesus will stir up, isn't that amazing? He'll stir up the gifts in you. He'll stir up the Holy Ghost and activate. Now look, now you're full of the Holy Ghost. You see that? Now you now the gifts is operating through you with power. All that settled at the bottom of gifts and blessings has now been activated and stirred up in your entire being. By the sword of the spirit. By the presence of God. Can't you see how simple but yet helpful. This parable that God told me to do for y'all. But also look at it. How the demons can be stirred up in people. Unfortunately even in Christians. And even in you. You got to get the demons out of your soul. So they can't stir up in you like this either. Remember the Holy Spirit stirs up in your spirit. And he, and he starts to emanate into your soul and into your body and your mind. But demons can stir up in a person's soul. So I wanted you to see, isn't that amazing? So you got to get stirred up. All that settled at the bottom, that's the reason you haven't had the victory. Because you got to get stirred up, y'all. You got to worship the Lord. You got to have a relationship with him. You got to know how to glorify his name. You got to learn how to praise. You got to have a prayer closet. You got to have a personal relationship with Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, stir up the Holy Ghost in me. I want the fruit and the gifts to be all in and through me, Jesus. Grow in me. Magnify yourself in me. Amen. I hope that helped y'all. Don't make fun of, uh, you know, Mr. Bottle, the superhero. Okay. Shout out to my son who hooked me up and allowed me to use... Uh, legs and arms from an action figure. I appreciate you, my my son. Thank you. And I, I know everybody else was appreciative for uh, you allowing me to use the arms and the legs. So hope this helped, y'all. We're going to get back to the message. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All jokes aside, I know Mr. Bottle Man, the superhero with his flat head. But what an amazing analogy. All glory to Christ. Did your understanding open? When you seen that bottle shake up. And when you seen that, that, that beautiful stuff at the bottom. Stir up. And go through the entire bottle. That's why bottles will say shake before drinking. Why? Because... You'll get a very watered down bland taste unless you shake up the bottle to get that, that, that good fiber and the fruit and the vitamins and all that good stuff to stir up in the bottle. That is the mystery. Now, just as you've seen it in the godly realm. The evil ones will try to do it in the demonic realm as well. What did I say earlier? The Holy Ghost resides in your spirit. Demons could try to reside in your soul. So the same way the Holy Ghost stirred up. My man, your leg. I'm just going to have to move him to the side. I'm done with him for now. Right? Right? The same way the Holy Ghost will stir up the spirit, the devil could try to come through people to stir up people that have demons in their soul. And the demonic residue at the bottom of their soul will stir up 
and it'll activate them to act demonic with you. This is the mystery why people change up. That's why the brother at the park, when I said, wow, man, I just preached a message on this. And, of course, I meant by myself with the Lord and with my family. I, haven't, I didn't release it to y'all yet. But he said something interesting. He said, demons will lay dormant until the, this, there's certain demons that will lay dormant until the first of the month. Why? It's when, the, when the people, they crackheads and heroin addicts and drunks get their check and the demons will stir up in them, in the soul. Hey Amen. Go get that crack, man. Spend your money. Go get that crack. And they're feeding the demons through that sorcery. And once they, once, once, uh, you know, a few days go by, the money is spent, the demons will settle back down at the bottom of their soul and wait again to the first of the month. That is crazy, but it's true. There's also demons that come and operate in seasons. Where you ever notice some of y'all might have a friend or a spouse or a family member who everything will be cool, but there's certain seasons where they just completely change on you. And you're like, what is this? What is wrong with this person? Like, this ain't even the same person. It's because something activated a stirring current. And the demonic water in their soul was troubled. And those demonic entities were stirred up into their body. Ultimately rising to their mind. You notice how when this stirred up, it came, it, it stirred up all the way to the top of the cap. This is, this is so liberating. So liberating. So liberating. So now you see how they operate. And one of the demons that does this is the Kundalini spirit. It's a very strong religious spirit. It's a serpentine spirit that resides at the base of the spine. It coils up and it waits dormant. And whenever true men or women of God come around to try to reach out to a lost soul who has that, the kundalini spirit is very vicious. It will uncoil itself and stir up in the soul and strike at the believer through the mouth of that person and put thoughts in that person's mind to not like you. This is heavy word. This is deep knowledge. This almost became a partner's only message. But we got some other messages that are very deep that are for partners only. But be grateful that you're getting this. Hallelujah. So, we're going on this on two different outlets now. We're talking about how by the laying on of hands. Now, let's break this down more deeper. As a man of God, as a servant of the Most High God. If I lay my hands on you, led by the Holy Ghost. Either I'm imparting the Holy Ghost into you. By transferring, right? Right? By the laying on of hands with gifts. Or if you've already received the Holy Ghost and gifts. The gifts may be dormant at the bottom of your spirit. And it has to be activated. You know what? What you need is another scripture. Go to the Gospel of John. I'm loving this message. You're loving this message. Hallelujah. Go to John chapter 5. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. It says here now in chapter 5, verse 1 going down. And this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, Bethsaida having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind and halt and withered, waiting on the moving of the water. Wait till you read the next verse. For an angel went down at a certain season, there's your nugget right there, into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease they had. That word in the Greek means 
stirred up. So the water was stirred up. It was troubled by the angel of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the troubling or the stirring of the water would activate a healing property in the water. And the people would get in the water and they were some of them were getting healed. The reason why a lot of y'all like brother words, I don't speak in tongues. I don't prophesy. I can't heal. Like what? God don't love me. No, 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 no. He loves you. He, he, when you received Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit entered into your spirit, man, he came with a whole lot of gifts. You need to be stirred up. You need to have your waters troubled. It's hard to find true leaders, true men and women of God. It's hard to find true men of God that would be led by the Holy Ghost to lay hands on you and stir up and activate the bottom of your spirit man and stir up the Holy Ghost with the gifts and with the fruit and it starts to stir up all in you. It wasn't laying dormant anymore. It started to stir up into your soul, into your mind, into your very being. And now you're just straight filled. Why do you think there's certain seasons where it would say, and Paul being filled with the Holy Ghost. Read Acts 13, 9. It wasn't that men of God just stay filled with the Holy Ghost 24, 7. No, Jesus Christ was the only one given the Holy Spirit without measure. So anybody that tells you, oh, I'm Holy Ghost filled when I'm sleeping, Holy Ghost filled when I wake, they're, they're lying to you. Okay, nobody can handle that. We receive the Holy Ghost. You have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, which is a completely another teaching. And what happens is... The Holy Ghost will rise in you according to the measure that is needed. If you're, if you just need a little bit of encouragement, the Holy Ghost will stir up what he needs to. If you're up against the, the most powerful sorcerer in your city, well then the Holy Ghost will stir up in you and fill in you where you'll have the power to blind that sorcerer like Paul did. You see the difference? Why would God allow you to just be utterly filled with the Holy Ghost on the couch watching watching Restaurant Impossible? You know what I'm saying? Like, what you need to be absolutely filled with the Holy Ghost eating a pizza, watching a, a show? You see, God is very beyond, he's beyond wisdom. So now, we're going through this, but then, you you not only have to worry about the wrong people laying hands on you, that they could try to put a evil spirit into your soul by the laying on of hands. That's why Paul said, lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't just let anybody lay their hands on you. You better know they from God. Triple check it. But what if there's something deeper? What if you still got demons? Now listen, anybody that tells you Christians cannot have demons, they are so far from the maturity of the gospel, it's sad. Okay, a believer can have demons. They just need to be delivered. Remember Derek Prince preached a message called Demon Gangs, right? Where the, the body compares the soul to a city. Well, in a city you have many di different areas. You have good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods. Imagine your soul is like a city. You have a lot of good neighborhoods, sister. You have a lot of good neighborhoods, brother. But there's certain areas of your soul that's still inhabited by demons. You got to get them out by prayer and fasting. You got to drive them to the surface. This is what it's about. Troubling your waters to get your deliverance. Oh, this word is so... Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Shout out to the chef of all chefs, the king of the kitchen. Okay, that needs to be made into a shirt. But what if it's deeper? What if there are demons that are residing in your soul? And when that unclean pastor who is operating in demonic power lays hands on you, instead of stirring up the Holy Ghost in your spirit, his demonic power stirs up the demonic entities in your soul to rise up. That's why some of y'all had the wrong people lay hands on you. Later on that night, you were in bed getting weird sexual thoughts. And you're like, what is, what is this? 
or you started getting angry and frustrated and you were like, I'm not usually like this. You done let the wrong people stir up something in you that was dormant. And it's different than a man of God that will draw that demon up and out of you. That's not what they're doing. They're stirring up those demonic entities to operate in you and through you. You see the difference? Dangerous. And some of y'all don't stop running around laying hands on everybody. Because you can also pick up a, a spirit and even curses. You, you got to be careful. Okay. So, um, you know, let's, let's go back to the whole stirred up scriptures. Just a couple more at least. All right. If you, if you go to uh, John eleven thirty three. It says that Jesus was stirred in the spirit. So not only, listen to this, can God stir up our spirit to desire him more? Stir up our spirit with sorrow? You know, go to Psalms 39 first. You got to read this now. I know I told you this earlier, but God wants me to read it to you. Check this out. Psalms 39, check it out, verse 2, in Jesus' name. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I musing the fire burned, then spoke I with my tongue, Lord, me make me to know my end and the measure of my days. You see that? You can get in an intimate moment with God. Have you ever been in the prayer closet and all of a sudden, It'll just change on you and you'll start to weep and cry. Oh, it's such a beautiful moment. But what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Jesus Christ stirred up the Holy Ghost in you. He stirred up your compassion to feel his pain. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's so good. Wow. But in John eleven thirty three, 33, go there. John eleven thirty three, 33, look at what it says. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. That word trouble mean his waters were troubled. His spirit was stirred up. You see that? And he felt them. He, was, he felt sorry for them because of the lack of faith. Here God Almighty is in the flesh in front of them. And they don't even know it. And he moved with compassion. That lets you know you can stir up the heart of God. I can't, I can't. This is, this is a really good message, y'all. Really good message. Right, Acts 21.30. Acts 21, 27, Acts 17, 13, and I believe Acts 6, 12, I didn't give you yet. I might have, but write it down. Because remember, God can stir people up in your life to bless you, to pray for you, to love you. But the devil can also try to stir people up against you. And some of those in the book of Acts were the Pharisees. Remember, these six things does the Lord hate. One of them, obviously, a lying tongue. Uh, those who sow discord among the brethren. What does that mean? They stir people up against you. You got to see that now. You got to see that. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at what it says in Jesus' name, verse 2. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia and Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. You see that? So that word there, provoke, means it stirred up many. You can actually stir up others with your passion, with your hunger for God. You can have such a hunger, it stirs up other people in the spirit to want to be on fire too. We get people that we fellowship with, we're like, man, lioness, you got me stirred up. Sister, brother, words, you got me stirred up, man. You, I get jealous sometimes in a godly way. I want to read more. I want to pray more. I want to do deliverance prayers. I want to make blind people see. I want to preach a mighty word. Yes, get stirred up in the spirit. 
The Lord wants to use you, sister. He wants to use you, brother. I don't care how many people put you down. I don't care how many people told you you'd be nothing. Well, now you're something. Now you're somebody to Christ who loved you so much he died for you and he rose from the dead on the third day. That should stir you up just that alone. Oh, this is so good. So good. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. I want to show you something else. Remember, there's different dimensions. You got your spirit. You got your soul. But what did I tell you? You got the spirit of your mind and there's also the carnal mind. Right? You want to keep the carnal mind dead and mortified. But if you're around the wrong people that are worldly, <clears throat> hanging out the wrong people and even religious people, you can actually revive the carnal mind and then stir up the demons to operate through the carnal mind to take over your mind. That was heavy if you caught it. That's why you got to walk in the spirit and get the spirit of your mind where the Holy Spirit will give you, the Bible says in Philippians, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Very deep. Now go to uh, Second Peter. Come on, I'm here talking. And I ain't even get to the chapter yet. Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. In Jesus' name, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I what stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, so you have the power through the Holy Ghost to stir up the minds of the believers. When I speak a word, why your life is changing is because what I'm doing through the Holy Ghost is stirring you up. I'm stirring up your spirit, man, through Christ. I'm stirring up your mind. We now tomorrow at work, you're going to be just thinking of this message all stirred up like, yeah. Why? I got a job to do. Amen. We have a job to do. In Jesus' mighty name, and you got a job to do too. Do what God tells you to do. Amen. And that's why you notice in Philippians it said whatsoever is good and whatsoever is pure and right and honest and virtue. And he says think on these things. Why? It stirs up your pure mind. See, some of y'all dwell on drama too much, negativity too much. The Illuminati's after me. Gang stalkers and everyone is out. No, see, the devil is now stirring up that carnal mind of fear and torment. Cast it down. What did Corinthians say? Casting down imaginations that exalts itself. When that imagination tries to stir up the carnal mind, strike it down in Jesus' name. Someone hurts you and you all day long just thinking about what that lady said to you, or what that man said to you, what your spouse said to you. Cast it down. Don't let the devil stir up that filth in your mind. Be pure and meditate on God. Don't let them rob you of your joy. Oh, this is such a good message. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Go to Job. I know I said it. Job chapter 17. Brother, we was just in peak, man. You got me going to Job. Check it out. Let's go. Job 17. See if you can, you can beat me. I'm kind of, I don't know why I'm kind of slowing up with this one now. Okay, Job, there you are. Job is one of them brothers, man. You skip right by him and not even know it. Job 17. Y'all ready? Verse 8. Look at what it says now. Upright men shall be astonished at this. And the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. This is amazing. This lets you know that righteous people can be stirred up against the ungodly. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Also read Ezra 36.22. To correlate with that. Two more I want to go through. As far as the demonic realm. Go to 1 Chronicles with me. Chapter 21. Oh I almost opened right up to it. Thank you Holy Ghost. 1 Chronicles 21. Look at what it says. 21. In Jesus name verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel. And provoked David to number Israel. If you study. And look it up. It means he stirred up David. You want to do a prayer that, Lord, don't let the devil stir me up. Don't let him have access to anything of mine. My mind, my soul, my spirit, I give it all to you. Don't let the devil use me and stir me up against you, God, to sin against you. What do you think is happening with some of y'all that get attacked with pornea? 
or demons of the night to try to get you to masturbate and things like that. They're trying to stir up that, that spirit in your soul to stir up all into your mind where, you know, when a person gets that uncontrollable burning lust sensation where they almost feel like they can't control themselves, you got to cast it down. Them demons are trying to stir up that, that pornia spirit. And that's why you got to get completely delivered. You can get these demons taken out of you. Okay, now we do deliverance prayers and they're, they're amazing what Christ can do over a phone. Just by the sound of Christ in our voice. But we have a lot of people lined up, so don't just run to us. You got to run to Christ himself first. We as human beings are here and Christ is in us, but I need you to seek him first. Go pray and fast. Get in the Holy Ghost. And get in your prayer closet and say, Lord, get these demons out of me. Come out of me, you foul spirits. Exhale them out because their spirit, their pneuma, their ruach, their breath, you got to push them out of you. Okay? But if you need deliverance prayer, just, just go to revelationsofjesuschrist.com, thegettogospel.com. It, it may take a little bit of time. You got to be patient now. Okay? You go to the registry of motor vehicles, you're going to get mad if you're not next in line. It might be 50 people in front of you. You just got to be patient. Don't let the devil get you all offended. We love you. We're not ignoring you. Okay? It is what it is. Just be patient. So, the other thing too is 1 Kings 21. This one is deep. A lot of this is so true. Okay? And it is not just wives. Husbands try to do it too. Okay, but if you read 1 Kings 21, look at what 25, verse 25 says. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. See, some of y'all men, your wives really run the relationship. And they'll try to be used by a Jezebelian spirit to stir you up against us, to stir you up uh, to do wrong. You need to be a man. Some of you wives, your husbands ain't saved, and the devil is trying to use them to stir you up to do something against God. Or why are you part of that ministry? Who is this brother worst guy in line that's? They're probably a cult. They're blah, blah, blah. What is that? That's a demonic entity trying to stir you up in a wrong way. You got to block. You got to cover yourself under the blood. You got to get all that stuff out of you so there's nothing for the devil to stir up in you. Huh? Good word right here, y'all. Thanks be to the Holy Ghost. Now, wrapping all this up, we kind of want to recap. We talked about the laying on of hands. Which again, like I said, it's a completely different Bible study. But it was enough for you to get it. How laying on of hands can impart the Holy Ghost and gifts. How we, we talked about gifts. The Holy Ghost is nine gifts and nine fruit. Although there's something deeper than that. We can get into another day. But let's just stick to those nine and nine. Right? And how the Holy Ghost can be stirred up in us. And when you stir up the Holy Ghost, he stirs up the gifts. It's like this drink. Don't mind the missing leg, y'all. I tried for real. I had the glue gun and I was doing my thing. But down here, now if I read, oh, I took off the ingredients. But down here, it's carrot and turmeric and orange and all types of vitamins and minerals. It's more than one thing at the bottom here. So when I'm stirring this up. Right? A lot of stuff is being stirred up into the entire bottle. So when you stir up the Holy Ghost, he stirs up a lot of different things. He stirs up joy and peace. He stirs up prophecy and tongues. He stirs, my God. Ah, I love this message. I love you, Jesus. You're the giver of the message. You got to learn how to move the Holy Ghost and stir him up. Worship Jesus Christ. Praise and shout in the, in the prayer closet. Glorify his name. You gotta see David, you gotta study David now. 
David knew how to move God. He, he was a very romantic man. He knew how to be intimate with his heavenly creator. He knew how to compliment his heavenly creator. He knew how to trust his. He knew how to trust in the promises of God. He moved God a lot. You got to learn how to move the Holy Ghost in the spirit realm. Where he's so pleased. That's why they said as men were moved by the Holy Ghost. What did the Bible talk about? The Holy Ghost groaning things that cannot be uttered. When you stir up the Holy Ghost to the point where he's speaking through you things that cannot be understood. Come on, y'all. We also talked about how, first off, you got to pray and fast, get these demons up out of you. Don't let just anybody lay hands on you because you don't want someone imparting a demon into you or, or demonic gifts. Which a lot of y'all have new age gifts and you think you operating in the spirit. It's deception. Okay? A lot of y'all got caught up in terrible things. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. You went to the wrong prophet conference. And they told you to cut a thousand dollar check. And they pfft, farted in the microphone. And I ba 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 ba. And the, the false prophet or prophetess laid their hands on you. And you went home and felt warm and fuzzy. But it was a strange fire. I'm telling you this is real. But the good news, you can get cleaned up. The good news is now you have the knowledge of this word. Now you have a goal ahead of you. To clean up your soul, get all these demonic entities out. And don't let the enemy stir up anything bad in you. And get the Holy Ghost filled in you. Seek him with prayer and fasting. And get the Holy Ghost stirred up in you. And the gifts will activate. The fruit will activate. That's your way out. That is it right there. I'm telling you. A lot of y'all feel so good right now. I'm telling you. You like wow. I'm so excited. Because this is what you needed to hear. Some of y'all was wondering why you can't quit that addiction. Why do you keep getting angry? Why you keep struggling with pornea? You got to stir up the Holy Ghost. Stir up the gifts in you. All that good nutrients that's going to help you be delivered. And help you overcome temptation. It's been dormant at the bottom of your spirit. You got to learn to stir up. Stir up. That way you got power all through your body. See. Woo. Stephen, when you read how it said he had the face of an angel, the Holy Ghost was so stirred up in him, he was just in every part of his being, even emanating from his face. You hear me? You want another scripture, I know. Go to Luke chapter 6, come on. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, I'm going to show you something now. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 6. Verse 38, what does it say? Give and it shall be given unto you. A lot of y'all don't understand that. Maybe that's a sign. I definitely do got to preach that. That might be a sign. I definitely, um, I know y'all been emailing me. We'll get the uh, tithes and offering message done soon by the grace of God. But listen to this. Some of y'all are givers though. And you give to God and God blesses you. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down and what? Shaken together, running over. Now, wait a minute. Shaken together? I got an extra. I had to buy a backup. Hold on. You see that? You see it? Look at that. That's what happens when you allow the Lord. To shake you up. See a lot of y'all get all scared. When God is shaking up your life. Yeah, things are happening. Tribulation. Persecution. Stress. All these things attacking. And God is saying. I gotta shake you up. <laughs> I gotta shake you up my daughter. I gotta shake you up my son. Cause y'all. All the good stuff was laying dormant. At the bottom of your spirit. But now look at you. All filled with the Holy Ghost and fruit and gifts. Just perfectly even. Well balanced. Shaken together. <laughs> oh Lord. I know. Lord I'm done. I can't. I, I, I gotta go y'all. I love that analogy. That was such a good analogy. Glory to Christ. 
So now, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Huh? What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? It's time for you to walk in a new level with the Lord. I know as far as what was prophesied over us and all those that are with us, God has taken us to a whole new level. And I mean that with humility. Question is, are you coming? We love the Lord. Do you love him with us? We serve the Lord. Do you serve him with us? Another thing too in Deuteronomy and Leviticus where it talks about certain animals you weren't allowed to eat. Notice that God did not want us to eat the creatures that settle at the bottom of the ocean and the lakes. They were very dirty creatures and they would, they would settle and lay dormant in the mud. They had no scales. This is like what these demons, it's like what these demons do. They lay dormant on the bottom of your lake or the bottom of your soul. And they just lay dormant. And they wait for the right time to strike. So you got to pay attention to this. You got to pay attention to when things start to happen in your life. Let's talk about the demonic aspect and then the gospel aspect. And we're going to pray and get done. So I want to refresh your memory as we're ending, we're coming to an end of the message. Pay attention to seasons On both ends Because remember it was a certain season That the Lord would send the angel To trouble and stir up the waters But the stirring and the troubling of the waters Brought the blessing The, the troubling of you Stir you up So you could be the blessing So you could receive the, the blessing At the bottom of your spirit Where it was not really attainable it was so deep down in you, you couldn't really access it. So God had to shake you up and trouble your water. The enemy will try to do that too, though. See, the Bible says, he said, Peter, Satan comes for you. He desires to sift you like wheat. Satan was looking for what he could stir up in Peter. Ooh, I just caught that. Oh, Lord, I'm downloading. Jesus is Lord. Satan seen the fear of dying and the fear of public rebuke at the soul, at the bottom of Peter's soul. And at the right time, well, bad time, but for the devil, he stirred up that fear at the bottom of P Peter's soul. He stirred it up. He stirred it up. He stirred it up. And Peter said, I don't even know the man. And he denied Jesus. Why? That dormant demon. That's a good word for it. The dormant demons. Were stirred up. And Peter was. He didn't realize. They were that powerful. Because they were dormant and quiet. Oh this is a good way to end this message. That's why you can't put your trust in yourself. You got to get before God and say, Lord, I don't trust myself. I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to overcome these temptations. I need you to take this stuff up out of me. Clean me up. Burn me with your Holy Ghost and fire so I can be a new creature to overcome and endure to the end. Because Peter didn't know that stuff was laying dormant at the bottom of his soul. And at the right opportune time, Satan shook him up. And that fear... Went all in throughout his entire being, his soul and his mind, and captivated him. And Peter, before he knew it, denied the God of the universe, that God of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God in the flesh, Emmanuel. And of course, Jesus had mercy on Peter. But that's the mystery of it. So what is it that's hiding in you that the devil wants to try to find and stir up in you? Some of you think you'll be faithful to Christ or to your husband or to your wife or to this ministry. But is there something in you that you may not see that you need to pray and fast and get up out of you? What if, what if you think you're strong enough, but what if the enemy sends an assassin, brother or sister, some really beautiful person? That is permeating with lust. And they're trying to draw up and stir up lust that's been hiding in you. To cause you to fornicate. To cause you to commit adultery. And the list goes on. 
The, ooh, I'm catching revelation. The reason why a lot of y'all go back to the drugs. There's a lot of y'all that you have a season where you're on fire for God. You're in love with the Lord for a few months. And all of a sudden you go back to crack. All of a sudden you go back to drinking. All of a sudden you go back to the cigarette. All of Why? You didn't fully get it up out of your soul. And what the devil did was wait for you to put your guard down all excited and he struck at you with stress, with different attacks. It came from different directions. And he started to stir up your soul and activate that addiction you thought was gone. And then it stirred up until it rose to the cap or your mind. And all of a sudden now you're getting probed in your carnal mind with all these thoughts about crack or drinking or cigarettes or fornication or porno. And before you knew it, you fell. So now that you know this great mystery that the devil is very upset that you know. And we don't care. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ is very excited that you know. Fight now. Pray and fast now. Strike at that now. So if and when the enemy as he roams around seeking whom he may stir up or devour. You're ready and prepared in Christ, leaning on Christ, trusting in Christ, not yourself. And you've already asked Christ to search you out with prayer and fasting. You practically vomited that stuff up out of you. And I say hallelujah. You got that lust out of you, that addiction out of you, that sorcery out of you, that depression out of you, that anger out of you. That's why, listen, what if I told you that Satan tried to stir up Jesus, but he couldn't? That's why Jesus said, the prince of this world, he comes after me, but he finds no nothing in me. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. Jesus was a pure vessel, pure. There was nothing in there for the devil to use against him. He was pure water, living water. Absolutely, utterly filled with the Holy Ghost. Satan, there was nothing Satan could stir up in Jesus. Lord, I worship you. Bless your holy name, Lord. Bless your holy name. Didn't that give glory to Jesus? That was amazing. This is why I love doing this. This is why I'm so grateful we're full time. It is utterly needed for true men of God to be full time right now, y'all. Utterly needed. Because we're running out of time. So now we talked about that demonic realm. And how you got to get that stuff up out of your soul and out of your heart and out of your mind. Forgive those that have hurt you. Get your wounded spirit cleaned up. Because that's, that's how the enemy strikes at the spirit. He can't dwell in there, but he can get your spirit wounded. You see? So you got to get cleaned up. You got to die to yourself. That's why the Bible says mortify your members. If you die to yourself, how could the devil stir up anything that's dead? Oh, man. That's amazing. You know, there's one more too about the laying on of hands. If you remember um, in the Old Testament, when Jacob met with Joseph... He had two sons, uh, Genesis 48, and remember he crossed hands, and he, he laid his hand on Ephraim and Manasseh, right? There's a mystery there, I wasn't going to tell y'all, but Ephraim means fruitful, Manasseh means forgetful, isn't that interesting? But he laid hands on them and imparted into them. Now that's a whole different mystery, a study that I can get into another day. But my point is, is that after Jacob laid his hands, he basically was like, my job is done. I can go and die now. That's how important laying on of hands is. And during the conference, as we're led, we will do so. Hallelujah. Lord willing. But now, now that we expose that demonic realm... Right? And we talked about pay attention to seasons now. How these demons come around. And there's demons that try to stir up evil in your marriage. 
where you guys will get along for a while, but then all of a sudden there's a weird season that comes. Acknowledge it and say to your husband or say to your wife, oh, babe, that's what they was talking about. Brother Words was talking about. That's that evil. They're trying to stir us up, girl. We ain't fighting. Uh Uh-uh. Tell your husband, I ain't fighting with you because I know this the devil trying to stir us up. I, I know it. I see it now. I reject it in Jesus' name. And love on your husband, girl. Love on your wife, brother. You see what I'm saying? Or he'll try to stir you up against other saints of God. Right? Pay attention to this stuff. But also pay attention to the Holy Ghost. He'll stir you up to go worship him. You ever get that urge to just worship but you don't because you say you're busy? Don't do that. God is stirring up your spirit. Remember, God is in the spirit. And he permeates from the spirit And lives in the soul as well and in your mind and your whole body. But he remains in the spirit. That's where he starts with. And he emanates. But the same thing applies the demonic realm. Satan wants to live in that soul. He wants demons to live in the soul. And they will permeate through the flesh and manifest. That's why people will foam at the mouth and all of this stuff. Because they're dwelling in there. Right? But get into worship. Did you know even music stirs up the spirit? All right. What do you think happened when David played that music? He was stirring up Saul. And the demons couldn't handle it. So get stirred up. Get the gifts and the fruit that's in the Holy Ghost. Remember the Holy Spirit is the one. It's the same spirit that provides all the gifts and all the fruit. So worship Jesus Christ. And in return, Jesus will stir up the Holy Ghost in you, the Holy Spirit in you. Make sure first you've received the Holy Spirit, amen. And then the Holy Spirit will stir up in you. And that's how you get them beautiful seasons, sister and brother. We're just meditating on the word. Don't you love those seasons where, oh, you're just in the joy of the Lord. Nothing can take that. You're in the peace of God. You're thinking of the word. You are in worship. You think about God all day long. Your co-workers think you absolutely, absolutely nutty. You don't care. <laughs> Why? You stirred up in the spirit. Oh, if only we could just stay that way. But what if I told you sometimes God allows it all to settle back at the bottom? Because A, he wants to see if you pay attention and you feel the difference. And B, it, it humbles you to appreciate. Sometimes you have to go without lights to appreciate lights. Sometimes you gotta go hungry to appreciate a meal. So learn the seasons of God. Anyways, I can go on and on. I just absolutely love this. Now, this prayer is very important. It's a twofold prayer. We're going to start with with the the heavenly side of it. And then we're going to move in and expose the demonic side of it. I'm so excited. I want you to say this with me now. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for this liberating message straight from the throne of God. Thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ ministries. Continue to bless this ministry, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I want you, Holy Spirit, to expand and be in every part of my being. I confess Jesus Christ as Lord, the Son of God who died and resurrected, I receive the sprinkling of his blood to wash me clean. And by faith, I receive the Holy Spirit right now. Lord Jesus Christ, trouble my waters like the angel did that stirred up those waters to create the healing properties. Oh, I feel the power of God. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, stir up my spirit, man, to bring healing wherever it's needed, not only in me, but that I can other I can be a healing blessing for others through you. Lord Jesus Christ, stir up the Holy Spirit in me. Holy Spirit, I worship you. I lift you up. I praise you, Jesus Christ. Stir up, Holy Spirit, and stir up your gifts and your fruit 
all throughout my entire being. Stir up your fire. Trouble my waters. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stir up my mind. The, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. The, the spirit of my mind, O oh God. Stir it up. That whatsoever is good and pure and holy and right. I will think on these things. And not dwell on the negative. Now let's move over. Say, Lord, remove all these demonic entities out of my soul and bind up the carnal mind. Lord, if I have to pray and fast, give me the obedience to do it. That all and any demons hiding in my soul and mind and even my heart, you are forbidden. Like God spoke in Deuteronomy, you filthy creatures that hide in the mud at the bottom of the lake. I am calling you out. You will not be used by the devil to stir me up in the flesh. To stir up a carnal mind in me. I forbid it as a manifested son of God. With power and authority, I reject Satan. From stirring me up against God and stirring me up to sin and to go against God's people. Lord, put a hedge of thorn of protection around me to keep the wicked ones out. Now say this now. Lord, if anyone has ever laid hands on me and imparted an unholy spirit into me or demonic gifts, I reject it. I reject it. Wow. I separate and I, I send every demonic gift to the abyss. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that came in through the laying on of hands. That was not authorized by the most high God. I command you to come up and out and loosen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am not in agreement with you. Now exhale. In Jesus mighty name Say I bind every demonic entity Hiding in my soul Be silent and unmovable In the name of Jesus Christ You will come out With prayer and fasting And also in my mind And in my heart Lord expand your kingdom In every area of my being in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, in my mind. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And stir me up like you did to Joshua. To build up your temple and to worship you. Stir me up to have a desire to worship you. To have a desire to obey you. And to seek your face in holiness. Stir me up Lord. Please stir me up. Wow. And may my zeal stir up others around me, Jesus. Make my fire that you give me contagious. Hallelujah. And Lord, bind the demonic powers operating through Pharisees and wicked, hateful Christians that are either envious or jealous or they just simply hate you and they, they're, they're, they're still under the law. Or whatever the case be, oh God, break their powers from stirring people up against me and against your people and against you. Unless you want me to go through a trial. Wow. Don't let Jezebel stir me up, Lord. Don't let the devil stir me up, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, now say, Lord Jesus, as I await true people of God to lay hands on me, Lord, you lay your hands on me because you're the most important one. You're my high priest. Say this by faith, saints. This is not a game. Say, Lord Jesus, lay your hands on me, please. I ask humbly, impart into me your Holy Ghost and gifts. In the name of Jesus Christ. (sighs) 
Like you said in Luke 6, Lord. Good measure, pressed down and shaken. Shake me up, Lord. So your blessing can flow through my entire being and not lay dormant. I want to be an active soldier. I want to be a militant soldier. I want to be moving water and not stagnant swamp water. And Lord, destroy the, there it is, destroy the demonic patterns of demons that lay dormant, waiting to strike for certain seasons. Break the cycle, Jesus. I no longer want to be victim to pornea, crack, cigarettes, alcoholism, anger, all evil. Strike at it, Lord, and smite it and remove it out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. <sighs> if only you could feel how I feel right now, and by the grace of God, some of you are feeling the way I feel. He's so real. That's, that's the greatest mystery. Christ in you. Stirring up on the inside. Stop focusing on this stuff in the world. Don't get caught up and entangled with the cares of this world. Focus on worshiping God. Focus on praising the Lord. Focus on doing His will to stir Him up on the inside of you. Have the spirit of your mind, the Holy Ghost in your mind, not the carnal mind. Time is running out. So many people have no clue that Jesus Christ truly exists and He's alive. And he's real. He's real. And he wants to live in you. He wants to reside in you. And take up residence. In your spirit. And into your soul. And into your mind. And into your entire being. Stop resisting the Holy Ghost. Fight temptation. Change your habits. Study your word. Pray and fast. And do not neglect fellowship. If you're a partner, you should try to get on the Thursday night conference calls. It's time to come together, saints. Let's give the glory to the Lord for this message. Thank you, Jesus, the King of the Kitchen, for another amazing, life-changing, liberating message. I'm very humbled. Because I know how much the Lord was pleased because of the way He's moving on me right now. That's how much He loves y'all. He wants you to get this knowledge. He wants you to get this wisdom. He wants you to get these revelations because this is what changes you. Faith comes by the hearing of the word. Don't let these fake little preachers uh, lie to you. They, they just don't have a word to give you, so they want to try to turn you against us. They're liars from the pit of hell. You know a tree by its fruit. And if you can't see the fruit of God with us, then I'm going to be praying for you. Something wrong with you. We love you so much. All our partners, thank you for everything you do. We want these messages to go beyond YouTube. We want to reach stations on internet television and all of these things. We're trying to reach to the four ends of the earth. Be a part of this fight. If you're not a partner, go to revelationsofjesuschrist.com or theghettogospel.com and get in the fight. Go to the contact, make your commitment. Get in the fight. Stop being on the sideline. Remember, stagnant water is dirty water. And that's where these demons reside. You got to be running water. I got a message that God gave a couple years ago. Look it up. We love you so much. I'm humbled. We'll be back sooner than later, Lord willing, with another message from the King of the Kitchen. Do not take these messages for granted. And if there's anything you think of that I didn't mention, please leave it in the comment section. 
Okay, this 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 can be a part two and three. This this is vast. All I could do is scratch the surface. Enough to activate you. Enough to give you the understanding for your eyes to be open. Remember, it said Jesus opened up their understanding to the scriptures. And their eyes were opened. Your eyes have been opened today. Now you know the danger of just letting anybody lay hands on you or laying hands on anybody. But now you know the blessing of true laying on of hands. Now you know how important the gifts are. And most importantly, now you know what Paul meant when he told Timothy. Read it one more time and we'll be done. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look it, look it, look it. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Stir up the gift of God that's in you, sister, brother. Get in your prayer closet. Worship him. Praise him. Lift him up. Live holy. Please God. And he will stir up the Holy Ghost in you greater than you could ever imagine. And gifts and fruit will be just all over you. All in you. Activated. You see, isn't that interesting? Look at it starting to settle again. You see that? So that lets you know that you got to stay diligent. That's why the Bible says, quench not the spirit. Oh, I'm still downloading, Lord. I can't even get off the, the study yet. That's why you got to stay. You can't take a day off in this. That's why every time it starts to get dormant, you got to get shaken up in the spirit. You got to stay like this. And you got to make sure them demons are up and out of you. Don't let people lie to you. Get into the presence of God praying fast and get cleaned. Even David said, Lord, if there's anything unclean in me, take it out of me. Humble yourself before God. Get the entire city clean. There shouldn't be just some good neighborhoods in your soul. Your entire soul should be taken over by the Holy Ghost. You can be demon free. To where now they're only able to come from the outside. And the only thing you'll be fighting against is the flesh itself. Get them demons out of you. Cook them out. Turn on your oven to 550 degrees broil and cook them up out of you. We love y'all so much and please continue to pray for us. We need your prayers. Amen. All right, we'll see you again. Bless.